Seated in the motos, we love this battle between two of the likable veterans, the 15 of Dean Wilson trying to catch Kyle Chisholm. He's got to make up six points on Chiz. Chiz had a rough go in qualifying today, just barely able to get into the show and not go to the LCQ. Also, shout out on the left side, the 938. That's Brock Tickle, somewhat retired, test rider for Monster Kawasaki, coming back to race again today after racing at Redbud and hovering around that top 10. So Tickle, a track that Tickle grew up racing. He comes from the Research Triangle area of North Carolina. In motocross terms, Southern Maryland's close. Uh, next to Bill Nicoletti. Yep. Surprised Toe Max that far outside, but yeah, you either got to be on the far inside or maybe get a little bit wider because you know what happens. Guys going to get piled up, so Eli and Hunter's going to have to get a great jump because they're side by side. Yeah, they are way out there. So here it is, the return of Eli Tomac to Pro Motocross. Chase Sexton, four straight overalls. A lot on the line when we go racing right now at Butch Creek. And those middle gates worked. Hunter Lawrence looking to control it. Got Justin Cooper there with him. I believe it's Nicoletti as well. Oh, oh, Cooper into the back of Hunter. Hunter survived. He goes off the track. Oh, big moment right there. Yeah, Justin Cooper, I think he jumps a little bit long and Hunter started closing over. It looks like something's wrong with Hunter's bike as he's looking down. Oh, no. Yeah, Hunter was lucky to stay up and through that, Aaron Plessinger takes the lead and listen to the crowd. Cooper still down. Uh, he's going the wrong way. I don't know if he's even trying to get back to the bike. Okay, he is now. Maybe just the way our angle was. Maybe yeah. The bike's closer to us, but good to see him back up. Just racing incident, but presuming what happened, Hunter was closing that gap. Justin jumps a little bit longer and they end up tangling in the air. Just racing, but... Where is Sexton? Eighth. So was not able to make that inside gate work. His teammates sure making it work, though. Here comes Plessinger. Yeah, Chase got a terrible start. I think he got closed off, and then he was almost dead last on the inside. But since he had the inside, he was able to squirt around, and maybe that incident with Justin Cooper, he's a lot farther ahead than what he was on the gate going down the first start. But that's what Hunter was looking at. His fenders pulled off. Yeah, uh, side, side panel. Look yeah. at the left side. Oh. Don't worry, folks. Aerodynamics, not a factor here. Jason Anderson of the 21 is super aggressive early. He's got around Nicoletti. Sexton on the four is coming with him toward the front. Yeah, I think Chase got around Eli as well, unless we saw him, that happen when he got caught up around the... Oh, no, Dean Wilson has problems. Uh, Dino. Dino needs these points. Need these chips. Come on. <laughs> and I think a good start for Tickle as well. There is Ferrandis. It's all back of the top ten. Tomac is in this group somewhere. Good to see Kristen Craig this far up. Yeah. Running fifth place. Yeah, Craig on the 28, the white rock star Husqvarna. Sexton on the charge. But this is what you talked about uh, with us earlier. You said how this track strings out. Sexton starts haven't been great this year, and it makes a much bigger difference. Again, the leaders are long gone. Yeah, so Jay Sexton running, what are we at? Probably six. Yeah, he's a little bit ahead of, ahead of that. And he's... Is that right? We're no, going to find out. Right. I was about to say, looks a bit farther back. But yeah, you can see how much time that he's lost. Yeah, and he's then, fourth place. Fourth so that's place. good position wise, but a big gap already. A lot of times you see these guys in a pack. Honestly, though, impressive for Sexton. He probably made four or five passes. Yeah, I want him to say that Aaron must have made a mistake or something because he's okay. a little bit farther ahead of these guys. But yeah, Chase has done a great job at uh, minimizing the gap, JT. Yeah, and I think for Chase, he wanted to get the start. Though. He got he got closed off right out of the gate, as you guys mentioned. And then it's a little bit of an insurance policy on that inside. Yes, you can get closed off, but you have that short distance where you can just kind of creep around and come out okay. But I, I really think for him, as long as he can see the leaders in front of him, which he can look up, he can see Hunter Lawrence, he can see his teammate Aaron Plessinger, I think he's going to lean on his fitness in that situation. You won't any, see any real panic from him because over the last, what, eight, nine, ten motos now, he's shown that he can come through the pack, he can close the distance down, and in that last 10 to 15 minutes, he can put multiple seconds a lap into these guys. So I think right now he's, he's making the most of a poor start, and as long as Plessinger doesn't extend that lead to too far away, he'll be just fine to sit here and, and tactically move forward. And he's continuing to attack. 
Christian Craig here, JT. See if he can out jump him to the bottom of this hill, and he does. Nice move by Chase. That's one of the places on the track that you actually can make a pass without a guy making a mistake. So strong move for Chase. You got to think the way the last few weekends is. He's pretty confident. Yeah, and he can start to see Hunter Lawrence in front of him. We saw what happened last week and how important track position was for that first moto. Hunter stayed in front of him, was able to hold him off, but race is on. Oh, yeah, Hunter Lawrence slowly closing back up to the seven of Plessinger. And the SMX track view showing you those gaps. So Plessinger and Hunter are close. Then it got back to Sexton, who's fighting Craig. Nicoletti, Anderson, Tickle, Tomac is eighth. Ferrandez ninth, Malcolm Stewart tenth. And this has been pretty good. We've seen some battles between Plessinger and Hunter as of late. Yeah, Aaron rode really good last week in that second moto. I almost think he was, besides Chase, uh, probably the second fastest on the track. He came from way back. So it's difference when you're out front, you're leading that pace. I don't know how comfortable Aaron is being out front compared to maybe being, you know, fifth and stuff coming up. But nonetheless, he's riding really good, AC. Yeah, last year, actually, I, I was racing this event, and I was able to uh, lead a few laps. And, man, I felt the best I did all year, just slowing around the track, whipping it, tear-offs. I felt great. And I, I heard some pressure behind me, and I'm like, oh, man, that's got to be Jet. Like, this is the only, that's the only guy that can go this fast, right, like in my head. But it turned out to be AP. So with that said, AP does have some speed here at Bud's Creek. The track agrees with him. Uh, the fans agree with him, I would say. That's for sure. This is becoming like a weekly thing. He gets a good start in at least one of the motos, and the crowd goes berserk. They love the number seven, so come on. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, oh, it is. okay. It's it's seven. <laughs> I mean, you never know. You Every time you hear, see him, it looks like he's won the race. So, yeah, Aaron, <laughs> great dude. He's obviously great on that motorcycle. Looks good out front as well. And for him, I, I think if he can keep Hunter behind him, just get more comfortable out front, he might actually have a chance to to be able to hold on and win this race once his teammate decides to come up. Yeah, they've actually kept the gap to Sexton about the same. Five and a half seconds. Hunter is the man on the move. Or maybe the hunt, I should say, because now he's to the rear fender of Plessinger. Yeah, he tries to get up the inside of him and that corner. Hey, Beast Mode's starting to roll. Going from eighth to sixth now and fighting his old rival, Jason Anderson, for fifth. That's the bottom box. Looks like Hunter's trying to get up the inside of AP. Oh, boy. Now, you're saying this area is pretty tough to pass. Is there an opportunity here? No, I mean, you saw how much Hunter backed off right there. So in his spot, Hunter doesn't want to lose too much time, but it's a great opportunity to, you know, take a breath because you know you're not going to be able to pass him because you can't be that close to him because you can't see. So that's where that little bit of gap. And now you're starting to see Chase Sexton pop up in the background because Hunter got caught up behind him. There's... Look at that battle. Now they've caught Craig. So it's a three rider battle. Craig Anderson and Tomac. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. When we talk Eli, he's he feels pretty comfortable. He look he looked good. If he gets around Jason Anderson and starts somehow closing up on these guys, I wouldn't be shocked if Beast Mode comes back this first race. Really? Because this track does it will suit him. And for a four time champion like Eli, it's all about confidence. And if he feels like Boom. he can do there it is, and get around and still keep climbing. He oh. might be a part of this. He just passed Anderson, and then Anderson just got him back. And there Hunter gets Aaron. Oh, yeah. It's the scrub now. Here Hunter's we go. going to be on the outside here. He's on the inside here, but AP. AP's got to be good in this downhill to hold the inside. He cannot do it. Hunter Lawrence to the lead. Nice. And Tomac fighting back against Anderson in the bottom. Here comes Eli. Same move. Great pass by Hunter. Now Eli's going to have to get beside Jason. Uh, he switches his line and goes on the outside. Now Anderson going after Craig. Hunter lost the back end in that corner at the top, puts it back together, and starts to pull away from Plessinger. This is good racing. Yeah, great racing. Hunter started losing the back wheel, starts sliding. Oh, it's Tomac again! Makes the move on Anderson. Yeah, so happy Eli, you back. Great move. And he's a couple spots this time, a couple spots this lap where he was able to get around, to almost get around him. And I think he's going to get around Kristen Craig pretty good because once you start seeing Eli starting to whip it, feel good. Good to see that. Oh, boy. All right, there's Craig trying to hold off the three. Adam. 
Christian Craig's been well documented with the elbow injury, and, and part of the issue is it's a strength issue, basically. And I think today with the track being a little bit uh, being a little bit smoother than normal, Christian Craig still has top level pace, and so it's really good to see him up here uh, in the fight. He is, but unfortunately now today he has to deal with Tomac. Did he just wave Anderson by? Yeah, I think what well, Adam was talking about his strength. Uh, Christian probably let uh, Jason know, like, come on by. Either that or maybe he had a, a tear off stuck, but he didn't look like he had too much fight. Got Nicoletti and Ferrandez battling right behind them. We send it back to JT. Well, I think the smart move there is to let Anderson by because if you know he's going to pass you and you hold him up, guess what? Jason Anderson's going to move you out of the way, which you're going to lose time. So I think for Christian Craig right now, he's thinking about big picture. How do I turn the best lap times? And if moving over for half a second is the best move, then so be it. That's what we call business decisions. Right there. <laughs> Make a business decision. Fight for tomorrow. Don't go elbow to elbow with someone when you don't have any muscle in your tricep. No. Which he literally does not after all these elbow surgeries. It's going to be a long recovery to get to 100% strength for Craig. And what do you think of what you've seen from Tomac so far, James? Well, I like what I'm seeing. Eli's going to have an issue, kind of what we saw with Levi Kitchen at first moto. The gap between him and Chase is so far, he might not be able to continue racing forward since he doesn't see anybody. So if he can start closing that gap down, He'll continue good. Otherwise, he might fall back in the hands of Jason um, El Hombre, which you don't want to do that. So Eli looks good. This guy looks really good as well. And it's worth noting again, Sexton not closing. It was about five, six seconds when he got to third around Craig, and it's about that distance now. Hunter Lawrence looking for another first moto win. Yeah, it looked like to me uh, Chase got within three seconds when Hunter was just passing Aaron and Hunter pulled it back out because he just ran at 156.9. Closest to, to that was Chase Sexton, 158.2. So he's got some some pace. Yeah, and it's back to 5.1. I can show you the motosport.com whole shot replay. There's a lot to cover with this one. Sexton with the inside gate. That did not work for him, at least as far as the whole shot is concerned. As JT mentioned, it did prevent it from being a terrible start because the number four does not get a jump. Chase on the inside, he doesn't get a jump, and then watch, he gets cut off by, it looks like Justin Cooper cuts him off, and he's pretty far back on the inside. Now and watch it, Cooper and Hunter here. That's gonna be the next pressure point. Yeah, you see Justin jumps long, but that's what I thought. Hunter's going towards the inside, Justin jumps long, gets on, oh man, that was a close one. Luckily, Justin was able to land on that soft stuff, but still a hard hit, and didn't catch anybody else out. And credit to Cooper, he did get back on the motorcycle. I'm trying to find it. 27 in timing and scoring. So at least he's good enough to continue to ride. And now we just play the game of the stopwatch. Can Sexton close on Plessinger? Can Sexton close on the leader? Or is this another one for Hunter Lawrence? Yeah, well, Chase just made the pass on Aaron. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yep. now he's coming. So. Still not even halfway. This race is a long time from being over. So there is the move. Sexton did get around Plessinger, and he's closer to Hunter than he was a lap earlier. It's 5.1, now it's 3.9. He ran a 156.3, Hunter a 156.9. So over the last lap and a half, he has started to put it together. Yeah, the last lap, yeah, they were, yeah, you can see Chase starting to, find that flow. It's beautiful. That's how you hit corners. That was nice. All right, so like I said, it's gonna be a stopwatch game now. Ah, oh, Ferrandez down. Got the visor flipped up. He was in that battle with Craig and Nicoletti. So the momentum from Unadilla is gone for the Phoenix Racing Honda Rider. Is that in that off camber section? Right after where Chase just went through. I get or, to tell you he's going backwards. I yeah, know that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where he is. <laughs> yeah. Wrong way where he's at. So, no, I think this is actually right before the mechanics area. Uh, tough break for Ferrandez. He's got to do a U-turn here. As we watch Sexton. Can he make a race of it? How do you think this track we were uh, speculating how it was going to play out for certain riding styles. 
good, bad for Sexton? How do you think it works for him? Well, I, I just noticed you see Chase being more patient in these corners. Like, once he gets in there, if his balance is not right, he's not attacking, getting on the gas as he buries it in there. He's starting to be patient. And the reason he's doing that is to avoid doing what we just heard with his motorcycle. So I think Chase has got a good pace, but with Hunter being out front, Hunter can ride his own pace, be really smooth. Chase has to actually ride harder to catch up. This track is easy to, uh, it's easy to make mistakes. So we'll see what happens, JT, as this uh, race continues. Yeah, and I want to focus on Hunter. We saw Chase Sexton through this section last lap, putting it together, but I think it's a great lesson for the viewers at home to learn about the power of momentum. You're going to see Hunter come out of this corner. He's going to double into this corner, carry that momentum. He's not really on the throttle. He's just letting the bike flow. He doubles into this corner, lets the bike flow again into that next corner. All the way through there, it's one motion. Not a lot of throttle, not a lot of brake, allowing the motorcycle to work. And that's a very underrated secret of how to go fast. Yeah, and JT, is that what you were kind of alluding to, what Sexton's trying to do as well, James? Yeah, yeah that's that's really how you yeah. go fast around here. If you try to turn into a throttle jockey in those slippery sections that are one big rut, you're just going to get a lot of wheel spin and go nowhere. So they're just allowing the bike to carry its natural momentum. The momentum he gained in the first corner, he carried that all the way through the section, and you don't get that start and stop start motion that can really slow you down. Yeah, no, I agree, and that's what I was trying to say. And I think with Chase, um, we saw Hayden ride that way, very aggressive on the throttle, but the difference was I noticed Hayden was actually staying up in the corner, so he was staying where the soft stuff was. So you can ride that way because there's traction. You can't ride that way if you're trying to cut out, and as his track continues to draw out, Chase was trying to cut out of these corners, and that's why he was losing the, the rear end. So he has to go fast because he has to be able to catch Hunter Lawrence, but he has to be patient in the middle part of the corners, at least stay up in the berm, because if he doesn't, then he's wasting all the time and losing it, as you can see how hard it is. So two different ways, but Hunter's in a perfect spot being out front, AC. Just to add to what you guys were saying, if you look at Chase and Hunter, the ruts here are super long, and um, they get a lot of hooks in them, meaning uh, the corners blow out, and, and sometimes the apex is kind of in different spots. And what I'm saying is it's really difficult to stay balanced. And if you look at Hunter and Chase, you notice that their head is directly in the center of the bike, over the bars every time. And it, it, just, it just goes to show uh, how important technique is on a technical ruddy track like this. All right, we got plenty to watch there. As we watch also this battle, Malcolm Stewart fighting Phil Nicoletti. And there you go. Your brother just made the move. But if you can't watch, just listen. Simulcast available. You can hear this broadcast on Sirius XM Channel 85. That is NBC Sports Audio. A couple super crosses I did not make it to this year. I did listen after taking the wife out to dinner. Got to make up for the Saturdays you're not there. Yep. So what do you think about Mookie here making some moves? No, nah, he's doing good. We, we've been talking about track position. I'm, he didn't get it the best of start, so he's riding really good up in seventh place right behind his teammate right now, but he just lost so much time, as everybody has if you haven't been out front in the beginning, but he's doing good. Maybe he has a chance to catch Kristen just a few seconds in front of him. Yep, could be the battle of the teammates there. Malcolm in sixth, Craig just went by, or sorry, Malcolm seventh, Craig just went by in sixth. They are on the Rockstar Husqvarna's. And honestly, you and I were talking about this yesterday. I I'm happy to see Malcolm back. He had not ridden outdoors full time in something like 10 years. I know he's not a podium guy, but that's a long layoff. I just feel the fact he's putting in these motos. I don't know if you agree. It's, it's got to be a building block, even for the future. No, it's a, it's a huge building block. And I mean, Malcolm wants to be able to be out here competing and be in top fives and competing for podiums and eventually race wins. But being out of this class, we talk about. You know, Eli Tomac missing a year, how it affects you. Or even guys that come, you know, who raced last year, comes in the middle part yeah. of the season. So missing as much time as Malcolm has, um, it definitely it affects him. But he's gotten better through this outdoor season. And if he can continue this next week, you'll see a better Supercross rider because he was able to log these laps. No matter what the results are, he is getting better from just being out here. And you'll see it next year. Yeah, there was a funny exchange. They got the rookie 250 teammate, Casey Cochran, earlier in the year, was asking Malcolm about the tracks. And he's like, I don't even remember. It's been so long since I raced them. Let's check in with the friendly rider out of Estonia, Harry Kulas, making the move 79 on Derek Kelly. This is one of the riders fighting for those SMX playoff spots. He's got a new motorcycle. 
You go all the way back to Hangtown. That was the Michaels Reno Power Sports Hangtown Classic. Well, that dealership gave him a bike. He raced it through Washougal. Then he sold the bike back to them. Then he got a new bike from them for Unadilla. He's been able to do a little bit of testing. And the testing works like this. He sends his wife home. She flies back to America with suspension. <laughs> and she said, this is the last year I'm going to do this. If you get on a team next year, you're fine. But you are not coming back to America and chasing this SMX thing with me doing helping you fly suspension in and out of the country. No, no, you, when you make the playoffs and get some of that money, you better not buy no bike parts. You better buy the wife something nice and pretty. Uh -huh. That is dedication, but good to see Harry out here, you know, continue to fight. And this just shows you how much it means to these guys to want to be out here uh, competing, but also to be able to make this uh, playoff run and what it can do for their career moving forward. And kind of a home race in his home away from home. Harry's been staying in New Jersey lately, Cherry Hill, and it's about three hours from here. Shout out to the old ATV pro, Nick Janusa, who's got a riding spot in New Jersey, and that's where Harry's been riding during the week when he can. But some weekends, he's off in Brazil racing arena cross, and he's doing the best he can with the, the bike he can put together, the time he has. Send it down to Adam. You know, guys, as I'm watching Kulas here, I, I think to myself, if there was nobody else on the track and it was just him, and everybody just watched just him, you would think that man is the fastest guy on the planet. <laughs> it just, it just, it's everybody is such a good rider out here, especially near the top 10. Uh, you know, obviously comparing him to like a Chase or an AP or a Hunter, it's a bit different, but uh, these guys have serious skills. Yeah, it's kind of a pros versus Joes thing, right? If uh, Harry shows up at your local racetrack, he's blowing the doors off of anyone. And you'd be like, you can't ride faster than that. But there is another level. Hunter Lawrence trying to maintain that lead over Chase Sexton. 3.2 seconds is the gap now. Yeah, Hunter did a great job. I was looking out the window, get a great job of getting around these lappers because where he caught him, he was in a spot where he was going to lose a lot of time. So lost a little bit of time as Chase is getting around one more lapper, but Hunter did a good job at making his way around those guys so he didn't lose it to Chase. And he still has about a 3.2, maybe a little bit smaller than that once we get there, but the race is on just like we were last weekend. Oh boy, it's getting close. And this is the time of the moto where Sexton does his best work. Battle for 20th. Oh, it's because Justin Cooper is entering point scoring territory. He's at the bottom of that battle. And Colt Nichols is 20th. Justin Cooper is 21st. Yeah, and the reason why we're showing you Justin because he's in a battle with third place in the overall points for the motocross series with Aaron Plessinger. So this is going to take a huge hit for him. Yeah. So he needs to score these points because I can tell you right now, the difference between third and points and fourth is probably a couple zeros on there. So Justin wants to get out here for pride but also for that bank account, too. Okay, there's probably some bonus money, third in the series, you'd imagine. There's a dollar or two <laughs> in here. Yeah, we don't talk about it too much. I, we, we mentioned uh, Sexton closing in on this title, I and mean, that pays a lot. That, that probably all in might be seven figures, and he's closing on that. Race wins, yeah. maybe six figures, so Hunter's digging deep. Yeah, Hunter is digging deep as he is caught behind a lapper. But yeah, between third and fourth in points is probably the difference between a day pass and an annual pass. There okay. you go. <laughs> uh oh, Sexton's closer than ever. Yeah, man, that, the reason that happens because you saw going up to the old finish line area, Hunter got stuck behind that lap rider. And that's what I was saying the lap before. He did a great job at getting around those guys so that didn't happen. But now Chase is right there. Let's see if Chase can get back um, ahead of this guy, AC. Yeah, and, and one of the one of the things that makes a racer great, when we, you know, when we say like Chase, he's great in the last 10 minutes. It's not just fitness; it's also adapting. After the sight lap, most of the guys will have their lines picked out. You know, you get the whole shot, you know where your lines are, you stay there. But about this time in the moto, about 10, eight minutes to go, those lines typically go away, and you need to you need to keep your head on a swivel and, and move around the track. And I think uh, I think Chase is taking advantage of the lines right now. Yeah, and I was mentioning that last weekend, uh, Hunter being able to adapt and get to that wall section. That one line basically helped him win that race. And so you can almost say Hunter out, um, you know, adapted better than Chase the last weekend at the first moto. Because they're both pretty close on speed. 
And I would say today the same thing. Maybe Chase is a little bit faster, but we're going to find out how much Hunter can react to what Chase is doing. And it's a skill to be able to do what Hunter is doing because he's got to be able to react not knowing what Chase is. He doesn't know where Chase is going, so he's got to have to think about and guess. Oh, especially with the lap traffic. Power run around the outside by the four of Sexton. To the rear wheel now of Lawrence. Oh, oh. mistakes by both. Yeah, that was close. Hunter got in that pothole and that bike kicked out sideways, but give him another couple couple hundred yards. He'll forget that even happened. <laughs> I love it when you say that. Short memories in motocross and back to the top. See if Sexton can get close. Send it back. To oh, Sexton just tucked it. Oh, JT, I know you want to observe there on Sexton, but that was a tough one for him. Well, yeah, and I was thinking that whole time he'd been closing the gap down, he had to be thinking about where can I make a move. The, this track is notoriously difficult to pass on, so he had plenty of time to think about planning a pass. Now he's got a lot of work to do just to get in position to set that up. Absolutely, and I was just about to mention, Chase has to be careful once he closes Hunter not to get stuck in these berms because it's easy to get close to somebody and almost get excited and try to get to him and just a simple fall. He just fell over, but that berm gave away how soft this track is. That might be costing the race victory this yeah, one. Yeah, look at the gap. It's eight seconds now. That might be it. And we'll get a couple looks at it here. He's heading back up. Now Hunter has a gap goes in and Hunter gets through that corner. Now Chase just gets in there and he just basically the front end starts pushing. He buries it in that corner and just falls over. See another look gets in. Watch the front end. Just sticks it in that corner. Adam. Yeah, guys, and we saw before the finish line, uh, Chase, where you pointed out Hunter and Chase both made a mistake. Sometimes when you're paying too much attention to the guy in front of you, that can happen, and and maybe it just uh, forced Chase maybe to have a little momentary lapse of concentration, but pure speculation. Well, we got podium interviews. We might be able to find out. Sometimes they don't tell you, but it looks like Hunter Lawrence, he's got a tear-off flappy there at the left side of his helmet. Could be looking at two straight first moto wins. Yeah, you notice Hunter's body position through those rollers this time. He allowed his body to actually use part of that suspension instead of just relying on the bike. And that's what threw him sideways the, that last lap right before Chase fell. So good to see him. But two weeks in a row, we saw Chase being able to catch Hunter. And he's had, you know, being able to react to it. And that's the difference that I've, I see. The difference I see now as he almost lose the front end right there uh, compared to weeks past. Oh, yeah. Eli Tomac yeah, out here. Eli Tomac out yeah. here. Well, he said he wanted to be in the podium battle. He's fourth. I'd say that's in the podium battle. It's a Monster Energy Racer update. Tomac fourth, Anderson fifth. Cooper, who had that big crash early, is 20th. And Dylan Ferrandez with the crash, 37th. As for Eli coming back late in the year, we asked him about this at press day yesterday. Good, good training motos at home. I'm making it the full distance. You know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't doing that. Racing is a whole nother level, whole nother ball game, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, I'm strong enough to be in the game, you know? So, I mean, we're gonna find out tomorrow, but overall, it's been, uh, it's been a long recovery, but now, you know, I, I've had some good time on the motorcycle, and, and I think I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and uh, what do you think, fourth? Is that a good spot? Yeah, I yeah, think it's, sorry. A, yeah, yeah. it's a really good spot for Eli. And as I mentioned earlier, he didn't have anybody to chase down. So he's doing a good job at still continuing to um, push forward because at that point, once he got into fourth place, Chase was about 10 seconds ahead of him. So he didn't have that rabbit in front of him. So it was going to be hard for him not to race backwards, but he's able to keep Jason, who's been on the podium in the last few races and up there competing. So. To come out, being injured, missing the end of the Supercross, coming out here, hasn't raced outdoors for almost two years. I would say fourth place in the way his body position is. Eli's doing great. I mean, he looks aggressive. He still looks like Eli. Yeah, I think he's fine. Yeah, and he'll be back for Iron Man next week and then building toward the SMX playoffs. Now, they haven't announced anything about his intentions of 2025, but I have a sneaking suspicion we'll see some news about that and maybe a contract renewal because we saw signs from Eli here and there in 2024 that he could still be fast like the old Eli, but 
you give him a whole offseason of prep, these races under his belt, et cetera, et cetera, and he could be that much stronger in 25. Yeah. He starts to build here. And, but you know, it's sneaky. You don't really think about it, but I know Eli's been able to go through this. The reason he's probably excited to be back for racing because once you're in it and you're the defending champion, you're always going to you know, suspected to win championships, it gets tiring mentally. So him being hurt the last couple of years, missing this season, it probably gave him an opportunity to relax, refresh your minds, and now he's enjoying racing. So Eli Tomac, because he got hurt, now he's he's probably going to extend his career a little bit longer because that time off. Hey, we'll take more years, more motos out of Eli Tomac. Back to this battle, Kulas, we told you his story, rider out of Estonia, and Welton, who's been very underrated this year. Welton's been right around this probably 9 to 13 spot in a lot of the races this year. The veteran out of Michigan, and they're in a battle right now, 13th and 14th. And this is all with those playoff points on the line. Your privateers like them, the payday to be in that top 20 and get into the motos and be guaranteed some money, that is big. Yeah, it's huge, and it's good to see these guys um, out here fighting and every position matters because they're talking points here. And when you get back into, you know, for, what is seventh back, fifth, sixth, like you're, it's only one point. Yeah. So to gain a massive uh, points over at Kyle Chisholm, you got to beat him by four positions. And where you got Kyle is right now, um, Harry's doing a good job of taking advantage of this, doing, doing his best. But it's single digits back here, and it makes a big difference. And both these riders would be in. The rider on the outside looking in is Dean Wilson, who we saw crash early in this moto and is now out. So Dean's not going to get points for this one. Chisholm has stretched his gap over Wilson from six points to 12, if it ends like this, because Chisholm is in 16th. See Kulas, Harlan, and Welton just ahead of them. But I love it, man. We're putting a spotlight on riders that probably wouldn't even really get noticed at this point of the season with the old format without playoffs. Yeah, I was just thinking about what um, Adam was saying, local tracks, you know, Harry going to local tracks with these guys, and they're like, man, I don't know how you can go uh, fast. Oh, they look unbelievable fast. Well, yeah. that's because they are. They are <laughs> good. Like, when you're talking about these athletes, they're the best of the best in the world. These are elite athletes, so they're no, they're no slouches, despite, like, hey, Hunter Lawrence is out front. These guys are outrun all of us out here, probably out here watching this race at this point, and um, it's good to see that. These guys are the best in the world. That includes you now? You put yourself in that category? Uh, I put myself in the category these guys can outrun. Okay. Yeah, All right. So, That's what I mean. You're yeah. you're just like me now. I'm just like you. <laughs> yeah. uh, someday maybe we'll see. Otherwise, I, I'd like to see it try. Yeah. But I'm the guy that's like, man, the track's too rough now. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, this is unsafe. <laughs> it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, James. Well, it's too rough. <laughs> too rough, too hot yeah. at 9 a.m. And, yeah, grinders here. Welton, who's raced all over the world. Kulas, who's raced all over the world. Those journeyman types, I'd say they're just guys that know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. You give them a motorcycle anywhere, any type of track, they'll make the best of it. And a good battle here for 13th and 14th, giving us a chance to spotlight some of the privateers. Welton on the Gizmo Mods Rock River Yamaha team. Yeah, and, and have an opportunity to be able to switch spikes and adapt like they do, that's not easy. That's not easy. Like, I know I get caught in my own thing, and... These guys be able to go to different parts and, I mean, parts of the world, ride different motorcycles, but come out here and compete. That's the talent itself. But right now, two weekends in a row, first moto, if he can finish this thing off, being able to answer the bell and take it to chase somewhat, man, you got to like what you see from the 96 and the HRC Honda. And then when they get Jet Lawrence back, you know Jet's probably sitting at home watching his brother, how much better he's gotten just from the change. Things are still looking good over there. Yep, got this new 2025 motorcycle. It debuted last week with the Moto win at Unadilla. Maybe the most surprising stat of the entire season is Hunter Lawrence still doesn't have an overall win. I think if you quizzed most of the fans here, he's had a great season, led the points for a while, a lot of Moto wins. You just kind of assume that one of these weekends he probably won the overall, but that's still a box yet to be checked. Yeah, and, that, and I'm sure it will get checked, whether it's this year or, or next. I mean, he's been very consistent, and, I mean, he's talking about racing against his brother, who's, you know, a generational talent, you know, and then obviously Chase Sexton catching form and having these races a lifetime. He'll remember for his lifetime, so he's riding really good. He's just getting caught in things that, uh, you know, there's moments of people's career. But right now, Hunter looks better than he did all year long. He's riding more confidence, and 
you know, you got to think those few weekends where he lost a mass, a few points. Um, you probably wish you could have that back, JT. Well, speaking of Hunter's brother, and we haven't referred to him this kind of way very often, but Jet got back on the motorcycle this week. So the wait is uh, coming short now. We're going to see him back at Charlotte. And this was a little bit earlier than I had kind of planned on. So it's still going to be a limited recovery time. I don't know how close to 100% he'll be, but Jet Lawrence fans have to be excited to see that photo of him back on a motorcycle. Yeah, it looks like a 25 too by that stock pipe. So <laughs> he knows what's up. Yeah, we're not going to see the 24 Hondas on the racetrack for these guys any longer. This is it. Final lap. Hunter Lawrence going to get another Moto win. Could today unlock an overall win? We'll find out later. Moto one goes to Hunter Lawrence. I got another stat I just put together here. When we went to Redbud, when Jet first went out, we had said that five motos Sexton had beaten Hunter and five motos Hunter had beaten Sexton. Hunter goes down, had a couple of bad ones since the break. They're kind of even up again. Yeah, I mean, when they're, when he's on, I mean, the guy, it, he had that mid par. That was it, yeah. That was it, and so he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job here. Eli Tomac. Eli, is, I can tell by the bylane, he's happy that this moto is being done. It's a okay. tough racetrack, but I mean, that's why he's a four-time champ. Man, I love to see this out here fighting, and I think he'll be better this next moto as well. Going to be fourth place, sexton.